Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. It's been about three or so months since the last video on here, but we are finally doing a continuation of the Lens Studio tutorials. I had to stop because school got a bit hectic. It was the end of the semester, so I had a lot of finals, a lot of big projects to do, so I had to stop making videos, but now that it's summer again, I'm going to try to get at least one video out every week, mainly focusing on various tutorials for AR or app-based stuff. And in today's video, we're going to be doing, we are going to be doing a continuation of the Lens Studio tutorial I did last time, where now we're going to add sound and an animation to our object that will set this UFO that I've set up in just the same way we set up the tennis ball in the last video. Except this UFO, when you tap it, will play sound and will continuously be floating up and down as it goes. So the first thing we want to do is make the UFO play sound, and this is very easy. The first thing I'm going to do is in our scripts here, I'm going to add a new script. Oh yeah, Lens Studio has gone through quite a few updates since the last time in this video. Everything is pretty much the same, where if you follow the Medium article or watch the last video, you should be able to figure it out, but it's still a little different. Um, one new thing is the add new now has all the stuff in it, and it tells you more information about what stuff is. Anyway, we're just going to make a new script, and it's here, and I'm going to rename it to Sound Manager, and I'm going to put it inside the scripts folder. And with Lens Studio, you can program it in here, which is what I'm going to do just to keep it easy, or if you have an external editor like Atom or Code, you can edit it there. For now, I'm just going to leave it here. And when programming for Lens Studio, it is all very basic JavaScript with some special features. So if you know JavaScript, you'll be able to figure this out. In the description, I'll link the link to uh, the full docs for every single thing you can do here. And in this video, again, I'll show you how to play sound and then how to move the object. So to play sound, the first thing we need to do is we need to add a input. So we can do, um, actually, I am going to open this in another editor just so that you can see it better. So the first thing you want to do is we want to add an input. An input will be something that you get to see inside Lens Studio. So if you've ever used Unity where you have sliders and you make public things and you can edit them, this is just how this works. And we want to make a component, right? Yep, component dot audio component. And we want to, I'm going to call it UFO sound. And this will be a object that we can put audio into. And then we also want to do when this script is run. So this script, you assign it to something. You'll assign it to a click or a drag or a double tap, something like that. So you don't have to do any setup to it. Whatever you put in here will just run when the script's told to run. So I'm going to do script dot, oops, script dot UFO sound dot play one like that and this will play our sound once when you click so I can save this we go back on studio it updates here and now if we go I made a new folder called sounds and I'm going to import the sound I made which is UFO hum you can just find these online import it it's right here in sounds and now I'm going to make a on the UFO. Or wait, where do we want this? We want to add this on touch collision. We want our add our script. So we're going to choose our sound manager. There. And then if you have sound, you have to make a sound manager, or not sound manager, an audio manager like this. Choose an audio track. We're going to choose our UFO hum, okay, and now under UFO sound, we can do the touch collision audio, which is this one, okay, and you can kind of hear it there, but we want this to run when tapped. So now if we tap it, it plays the sound. I don't know if you guys can hear the sound. I forgot if I'm recording sound of this or not. If you can, great. If not, it should be playing sound now. 
And if we look at our script here, so the UFO sound object we made here, that is what this is, UFO sound right here. So now we have a UFO that when you tap on it, it plays a sound. So now the next thing you want to do is make it so it moves. So I'm going to go to scripts, I'm going to add a new script, and I'm going to rename this one to movement manager. I'm going to double click on it. And in here we have to do a few different inputs. We want a at input for float, float speed. So how fast we want it to flow up and down. We're going to set a base number of one. And we want this to be a widget that is a slider that has a minimum value of zero and a max value of five and a step of 0 0.01. We want another input that will also be a float value and this will be the range with a default value of 10. That is again a widget that is a slider with a minimum value, oops, minimum value of zero and a maximum value of one and a step 0.01, just like that. So this will mean that we'll have two sliders that the first one will determine how fast it moves and the second one will determine how far it moves. And then we also want our UFO to spin, so we're going to add another input here that is a float with the rope speed that is has a default value of 0 0.5. And this is a widget widget that is type slider with a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 1 with a step of 0 0.01. So what these do is they say we're having an input, so something you edit here, that is a float, which is a floating point number type of variable. The name of our variable, which will be float speed range or rote speed. The default value you want it to be, so 1, 10, 0 0.5. Then what defines the input. So it's a widget, which is something that you get to edit with, that is type slider, so a slider bar, like a volume bar type thing. You have your minimum value, which if you have it all, way, all the way down, what it will be. You have a maximum value, what it will be if you have it all the way up. And you have a step, so for each little bit you move it, how far should it increase or decrease? If you set this to a big number, it will like snap as it jumps, but if you set it too small, it will be a smooth movement, which is probably what you want. And then here, we want to make a var that is our transform, which is equal to script. If you're using something like this, you will have these autocompletes that kind of are annoying. Get transform like that. So this will get the current position of our UFO. And we need our new Y to be, we're going to do a little bit of, what is this, trig now, to calculate a nice up and down float with a sine wave. So I'm going to say our new Y is equal to math.sine. So here we can use JavaScript. So if you ever need something special, you can just use JavaScript for all of this. So I'm going to type it out and go back over it. Like that. Right? There we go. So this is going to say our new Y is going to be a sine wave between the current time and the speed we want it to go times the range we want it to go. So this will make a wave that goes like this with the max and min, what our range is, and then the speed it travels will be the time times our speed. So now we need to do transform and set local position to a new vec3 of 0, new i, comma 0. 
And this is a local position, which means that if we move the UFO, this will still work and it will just go up and down in its new position. If you use a world position, then it'd be stuck to the zero, zero point, which I'm not actually sure where that is on the screen. So just leave it as local. And I'm actually gonna save this here so we can go see it work. So we're gonna put this on our touch collision object. And I'm actually gonna take our UFO and put it inside the touch collision object like this and move it up. Looks like, oh, it's positions got reset, really funny. So this would be like one, right? Not that, not this. Nope, two, three, yeah, three looks right. You shouldn't have to do this stuff. This is just trying to get it all nice and fitting inside of here. There we go. So now it's back inside the little cube. We can still click on it and it plays the sound. So now on our touch collision object, we're going to add a component, add another script, and this script will be our movement manager. And you see here are the sliders we had before. And we want this to be on frame updated, which means it runs every single frame. And now you can see we have our UFO moving up and down, but you'll notice it kind of goes under the ground. So to solve that, we can take our touch collision and just raise it up like this. And why are you still stuck in the ground? But what if we, we can also decrease the range. Doesn't look very good though, right? Update, update, can you refresh? Range of one. It's weird that this isn't updating stuff. Well, well you can see that it's going up and down. You have to play with these settings to get it to go exactly how you want it. You might actually want to, oops, I didn't want to open Xcode. Go to Xcode. Increase our range. Oh, I put max of one. This should be max of 30. That's why it's going weird. I guess I was reading this one while typing that one. Oh, no. We save this now. And this thing updates. Let me just remove it. Add script, scripts, movement manager. Okay, there we go. We want this to be frame updated. Here we go. Now it's going through the full movement. Still going underground though. Even if we move this up, which is a little weird. Why do you think this is? If we decrease the range like six. It's going in reference to this, right? So this should be what we're moving. Oh. What is this thing? I guess that works, right? So we just brought the model up. And then we can increase the range again, like say 10. And there we go. We have our UFO floating up and down. Oh, nice. But now we also want it to spin because we added this rotation speed thing. So now if we go back into our script here, we can add a new variable that we will call rotation. That will be equal to transform dot get local rotation. 
and we want to do var rotate by is equal to quat dot angle axis math dot pi times get delta time times script dot root speed comma vec3 dot up so I'm just this is good math is that not right math oh, yeah that is right okay so this is going to say we're going to rotate by an angle axis based off math.py times the delta time, which is the time since the last time we checked the time, times our rotation speed in vector 3 dot up, which means what angle are we going to rotate around. So if you're thinking of a three-dimensional grid in your head, up would be our y. So if we're rotating around the y, it will spin without twisting in any way, if you can kind of visualize that. So then we need to set our rotation to our rotation dot multiply by our rotate by Oops. like that so we're going to add this new rotation to our old rotation and I'm going to say transform dot set local rotation equal to this new rotation here and if we save and refresh you will see that it is spinning and if we tap it place the sound and we now have a fully functional snapchat lens with a ufo that goes up and down and spins around and i'd encourage you to play with this again in the description i'll link to the full list of everything you can do with scripts some of it's not fully fleshed out so you might have a little trouble and I have a few other videos that people have requested over the past three months of things they want to know how to do in this. So I'll try to cover that. And in the newest version of Lens Studio, which if you don't have, you should update to, they've introduced face lenses with you can do all sorts of things, which I'll also try to do a tutorial on that. So for now, goodbye, and I hope you have fun making stuff with Lens Studio.